Good morning. Welcome to the village of Romeo in Michigan, home of the Romeo High Bulldogs, home of Kid Rock, home of Halloween, one of the number one Halloween spots in America. There'll be a big parade here, uh, and home of a lot of voters. As you know, Michigan, right in the middle of the blue wall. Uh, oh yes, a lot of deplorables, a lot of smelly Walmart people, and a lot of trash in here, a lot of garbage. And a lot of early voters, two million early votes have already been cast, guys, in the state of Michigan uh, with six days to go. It is the center of the blue wall. By, by, <laughs> right. well, well, that's what they say. Right. Trump only needs one of those states. She would need all three. Maybe it will be Michigan for Trump. We will find out. But we're talking to the voters this morning. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, guys. It has been a lot of fun. And of course, the fun was actually provided by Joe Biden because he really stepped in it about uh, 36 hours ago when he was talking a little bit about Donald Trump's supporters, and he said this. Watch, folks. <laughs> For Puerto Rico, where I'm in my home state of Delaware, they're good, decent, honorable people. The only garbage I see floating out there is his supporters. His, his, his demonization is seen as unconscionable. Yeah. I mean, it's not, it's not typical. It's not unusual for him to say things about people that support Trump. I mean, he has got a long history of ripping the so-called MAGA supporters. A lot of Democrats do. Well, yesterday I was kind of running around, super busy, and I turn on Fox News and I see Donald Trump in the vest and I see this image of him in the truck <laughs> and I just started laughing. I thought, oh my gosh, good for him. Whoever thought of this genius idea, you said the campaign saying it was Donald Trump's idea. And then I thought, Pete, those Democrats are probably saying... Oh, my word, shoot, just like you said, Joe Biden stepped in it, and now they're taking advantage of it. All day yesterday. I mean, think about it. Kamala Harris goes to the ellipse to try to allude to January 6th, and they've been calling uh, him a fascist and a tyrant. Uh, and But if someone forgot to invite Grandpa, and so he was on a Zoom call in the White right. House and ma ma makes a statement about garbage, and now the news cycle is all about that, and in a way that only Donald Trump can, he puts the... Kamala Harris couldn't put the vest on and go into the garbage truck. Right. Just like Kamala Harris couldn't put the apron on and go into McDonald's. Donald Trump has a touch and a feel for working class blue collar voters. Well, and you see that here in Michigan and you see it across the country. He's able to pull off things she can't. And I do think that resonates, guys. It's an excellent point, Pete, because it also goes to the point that the former president is having fun. <laughs> the campaign yeah, right. is almost over. Yeah. He's laughing. He's making jokes about them right now. He's in the McDonald's. He's <laughs> in the truck. And he's... T the humor right now, when you see dark, 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 uh, coming joy. from the other side. <laughs> well, it was joy. joy. <laughs> it, yeah. it was joy on the other side. This is real joy now. Yeah. So, so there you see him, and he walked in, and it, it was a great soundbite because, uh, and we played a little while earlier, where he said, I wasn't going to wear this safety vest uh, to this rally, but some, some people on my staff said, it makes you look thinner, and so I'm going to wear it. He said, I might never wear it again. <laughs> you know, uh, Pete and everybody, You've got to figure that at some point Kamala Harris is going to realize, I have gotten some really bad advice. Early on, it was avoid the press, don't do the Al Smith dinner, don't do Joe Rogan. Instead, what, what does she do? She did, she did in uh, Michigan, actually where you are, Pete, that, that uh, supposed candid bar shot with Gretchen Whitmer where they knew that there were microphones right there, and then it's like, oh, I had no idea. It was, it, there's, a, there's an authenticity problem with her when it comes to the TV stuff. Donald Trump is a TV producer, a TV star. He's really good at it. Oh, Steve, you're no, no doubt. And here's the thing. They have a candidate problem, Steve. They have a, yep. This is not someone who anyone on the Democrat side voted for. Uh, she didn't win a primary. She didn't earn any votes. She was bestowed by Biden in a spiteful way who knew her political skills. They knew her limitations. So as a result, they curated it. They pushed along the honeymoon and they've counted on the news media. Think of what happened for the, with the comments from Joe Biden. They're trying to make it look like he, he said it about the, the statements and not about the supporters. The apostrophe. It's just like the interview with CBS. The apostrophe, just like the interview with CBS, where she gave a terrible answer on Israel. And what did they do? They replaced it with an entirely different uh, answer. So they've been counting on a complicit press because their candidate 
is not good at her job. Probably couldn't. I don't think she could win a spot on the Romeo City Council. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a problem. I'm right. wondering that's a if problem for that. how many people are going to dress up like that for Halloween tonight. And where do you get those safety vests? Are they sold out at Home Depot? I'm, I'm going to hit the street here in about half an hour in you one. You have one. I have one. You should wear it to a party tonight. Also, when you walk your dog, you should wear some type of reflecting material <laughs> at night. So just to, just say, a safety note. Also, she did a local interview with an ABC reporter who asked her really direct questions, and most of it was about this. That was a national reporter. That was a national reporter? Yeah. Well, she did it. I think she was caught I think totally Mary Bruce. by surprise. She could not. No, it wasn't Mary Bruce. It was somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, but she got totally by surprise. She can't shake this story. No one's talking about the ellipse speech. But here's a little of what she might have missed if she wasn't doing what Trump does. Trump watches her on the stump all the time. But Trump last night was with this guy named Brett Favre. Watch. How do you like my garbage truck? This truck is in honor of Kamala and Joe Biden. And I have to begin by saying 250 million Americans are not garbage. I can assure you we're not garbage. I see everyday Americans that make this country great. I want to thank all of our incredible sanitation workers all across America. Because they work hard, they really do work hard. And they do an incredible job, and they don't get the credit they deserve, like our police, like our firefighters. My response to Joe and Kamala is very simple. You can't lead America if you don't love Americans. It's true. And it's just so effective because uh, e even if you, Pete and Lawrence and Ainsley and Brian, even if you didn't know the story about the garbage truck and the garbage earlier, you'd see him giving that speech uh, exactly. in, in Green Bay yesterday and then it'd be like, why is Why he is dressed he like that? kind of Bob the Builder? And then you'd realize, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> He's talking a little bit about the, the message but Joe Biden made. It goes to the larger point, though, Pete. Joe Biden was supposed to be the unifying person. He was supposed to unite the country, as he says, restore the soul. And ever since he's been elected, he's this is not the first comment. I mean, the MAGA voters, the MAGA Republicans. Like, what no. does that even mean? He's been demonizing the Trump base, the Trump supporters, for a while now. Oh, a threat to democracy. Yeah. Uh, and here's the thing, Lawrence. You know this better than anybody. Um, and everyone on the couch, because you've been out at diners uh, like I have. What you feel in these atmospheres is love. Yeah. What you feel, same mm -hmm. thing that you feel at, at Trump rallies. This, and you're connected by, we love God, we love our country, mm -hmm. we support those who serve us, mm -hmm. uh, we work hard for a living. Uh, just the real basic, we, all we want is a secure border uh, and a dollar that goes somewhere. Uh, right. And our kids uh, to not be having boys going into girls' bathrooms. Uh, you know, just it's really basic common sense, but which, uh, by the way, is an issue in this town. Right. And there's met, I met some school board members who are running to change it. Um, so it's basic stuff that should unite us. And as a, in return, what do we get? We get called deplorable or smelly Walmart people, or uh, you, you name the issue. In this case, right. it's garbage. And I think it'll have more of a motivating effect than people think. And Donald Trump knows how to leverage it. Well, and Pete, you just went through some of the things that Democrats have referred to um, Republicans as through history, recent history. Uh, Fox News Digital put together a montage of things like I that. I thought I did it. I thought I was editing this you did. Oh, yeah, you did. Did. montage mm -hmm. together. So take a look at this. It's French. <laughs> you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. People have been beaten down so long, and they feel so betrayed by government. It's not surprising then that they get better than they claim to guns or religion or uh, antipathy towards people who aren't like them. Right? And it's a way to explain their frustrations. White, Republican, Hispanic, Asian, Republican, suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid, right? It's, it's I, I like, think that's, that's, they're that's voting, no, it's insulting they're voting to the against, voter. We, they're we, voting no, against no. their own self-interest. You voted for Trump. You voted for the person who the Klan supported. You voted for the person who Nazis support. You voted for the person who the alt-right supports. I don't hate the guy.
I hate the people who vote for him. I think they're stupid. I, I do. I'll be honest with you. I have no respect for you. Class resentment is a lot what, and anti-intellectualism and elitism is what is driving many of these, these anti-establishment, which are Trump voters, right. are anti-establishment. Absolutely. So, so they do all of this, Pete, and then they ask, why can't we never get polling right with Donald Trump and his supporters? Like, why does he always underperform in the polling? It's because you spend half of the time going after them, and so when they call, when you call them to ask them who they're going to vote for, you think they're going to give you a true answer? I'm going to hang up. Yep. And why are we losing young men? Why are we losing young yes. black men, young Hispanic men, yes. uh, different constituencies? No one wants to be condescended to. And they know other people uh, who have uh, lost out because of policies that have affected their communities, jobs that have been lost. That matters. And uh, it, it's, it's one thing to make a decision. Yep. It's another thing to be told you're being shamed for making that decision. And that only pushes people uh, in another direction. So you know what's so interesting is that when they first started vilifying, made it MAGA, tried to make MAGA a bad word, I think Trump was befuddled by it. He said, make America great again is a bad word. That's an acronym. <laughs> yes. And they said, do you understand? It's not just me. It's there's people. Well, I'm not I'm not all Trump supporters, just MAGA supporters. And people who vote for Trump say, what are you talking yeah. about? That's yeah. all of us. If you vote for Trump, I guess technically that's his slogan. Yes. You're insulting us. But then they moved on from it for him to go back to it. Last night is a nightmare. Notice they don't say felon about Donald yep. Trump anymore than they used to because there's 30 million felons True. out in the country. Uh, well, any people want a fresh start, and then they want to look at the case. The case is so flimsy that the more they looked at it, it looked like a political move. So they want quiet on it. Pete, <clears throat> That's why this is so damaging. Pete, you know what I love about these diners? It is middle America, and it's how we all grew mm. up. You know, going to church on Sundays. You moved your whole family down yep. to Nashville because you wanted them to have that southern, a southern education or a southern um, philosophy, southern way of well, life. Jen agreed to it. And Jen did agree to it. It's Long Island's becoming. <laughs> so red too but that's what and you, when I was watching Kamala Harris's rally and I saw the the young students who were yelling Jesus um, is Lord and she said you're at the wrong rally like middle America is not like that and you have these coastal elites she's from California look at Hillary Clinton she used to be from Arkansas and she abandoned all of that and now and then became a senator of New York and uh, family lives in New York now New York and California think very differently than the rest of, of the United States. Well, Pete, you've got a focus group right there. Why don't you talk to folks? Absolutely. We'll talk to some folks. And you're exactly right, Ainsley. Um, for modern Democrats, government is king. But for most Americans in middle America, Christ is king. And so <laughs> it's a very different viewpoint. Uh, Ma'am, uh, this election, did you vote early? I did. You did. Uh, and what issues are you voting on? What's most important to you? Well, in my case, uh, being a senior and speaking for all the seniors here, um, I need Trump back because uh, during the Biden administration, I had to take a job at 84 years old to subsidize my unemployment, my uh, Social Security, and uh, um, I can't do it another four years, you know? So we need Trump because he's going to save our Social Security. He's going to save our Medicare. It's not going to be spent on the, the far left, their issues. Absolutely. Was it, was it inflation that hurt the most? Absolutely. I mean, you know, paying what we're paying for groceries and everything and living on, on, on a fixed income, it's been really tough. And like I said, I had to take a part-time job just to subsidize my Social Security. Well, it's good to see you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Yay! This is our, uh, come around over here. This is our bar crew. Been hanging by the bar all morning long. Uh, real Thoughts? Did you vote early? Good morning. No, I didn't. I'm waiting till the day of the polls because I want to make sure my ballot goes in that box. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that heard that a lot this morning. Uh, what issues are you voting on? What's most important? The economy and the immigration, the economy. I'm a small business owner and we're in big trouble. There's some scary times right now. People can't afford to put food on the table, let alone get their kitchen remodeled or go get their back adjusted from a chiropractor. <laughs> it's, it's really scary for the, for the middle class. And with this administration, Trump is promising to bring all that back. He's proved it in his four years of office. 
that he's done everything for the people, period. We need Trump back. We want Trump back. Go vote for Trump. Here we go. This real quick survey of the room, and it's been a battle between indoor and outdoor. Here I am indoors. Uh, Trump says he's going to bring the uh, automobile industry back to, to Michigan, the Michigan miracle. Uh, who thinks that's possible here? So there's a lot of enthusiasm that if you unleash American manufacturing and the obsession with EV mandates, uh, you can really unleash what Michigan and Detroit has done for years, guys. So a lot of fired up folks. Yeah, I, just out of curiosity, Pete, how many people actually drive electric cars in Michigan? Let me ask this good question. Steve Ducey has a question for how many folks in here drive an EV? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's your answer. All right. There's a uh, so couple. How many people uh, does anybody here support the EV mandate? No. no. No, so it's right. very clear that issue is a winner for Trump and a loser right. for Democrats and, who worship at the altar of you know climate what he, change. He, and keep in mind, he's got the number one electric car maker in the world as his chief confidant in Elon Musk. You know what he says? Compete. Yeah. He doesn't say he's not anti-electric car. Exactly. Go compete and see what your electric bill is, see what works out, and just do what's best for you. But don't go out and put your hand on the scale. Uh, thanks so much, Pete. We'll check in with you exactly. constantly. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.